Brenda, do you have any plans for tonight? Well, I was thinking about going to a movie. You feel like going? Well, actually, I have a date. Uh, Would you cover my last hour for me? Yeah. Is it that same guy? Excuse me, may I talk yeah. to you? Yeah. I'm, happy to be so, to I'm sorry about that. Anyway, have me. a good time, okay? Listen, okay. I want you to tell her you can't, well, you can't extend your shift You tonight. said no more lectures. No, no, Remember Brenda, that? I want, no more. No, Brenda, I, please. Listen, everything is going to be fine. You're turning into obsession here with me. Would you please just listen to me? Uh, just... You listen to me. Now, Larry, me sitting in there for a couple hours and answering phones in ER isn't going to hurt me. I'm doing fine. The baby's fine. My vitamins are fine. Bo Buchanan? Yes. You're in love with Bo Buchanan? Yes, I am. No, it's impossible. Why? He's not your type. You mean that he's not the immature, irresponsible Max Holden? Oh, come on, you're kidding, right? You gotta be kidding. Come on. I've heard of, uh, of opposites attracting, but this is ridiculous. You and Bo are about as compatible as oil and water. Yeah, well, obviously, you don't know either one of us. Bo is everything that you aren't, Max. And he can give me a hell of a lot more than you ever did. No! I was not going to give you a lecture about overworking. I, what I was going to do is ask you if you'd like to go out on a date. A date? Yeah, you know, a date. A date. Like you go home and you change into something Else? even more ravishing. And uh, we go out to dinner and maybe a play, as a matter of fact. I got here somewhere two tickets, courtesy of a colleague of mine, for the new play that just opened. He couldn't make it because he's uh, operating in some uh, procedure in the emergency what room. Is it? So, well, it's the new the musical. Yes, sir. Rachel's Folly, uh, 16th been... Row Center. You're kidding. Yeah. I've been dying to see that. Well, now's your chance. I mean, can you be ready in about an hour? Oh, Larry, I told Meg that I'd don't cover for her. Have, tonight, she doesn't no. have a deadline. Besides, I don't think a little toe tapping is going to hurt you any, is it? No, certainly not that music. I love okay. it. I already bought the cassette from my car. Well, great. Now's your chance to see it live. You know, get right up close to the uh, the roar of the grease paint, the smell of the crap. <laughs> no, that's not right. <laughs> I thought you said that you and Dan were going for supper tonight no, I together. I can't make it. Well, I don't have anything to wear. I... Brenda, come on. But I, I want to go. Well, all so... right. Okay, it's a date then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. Let's go. A okay. date. You got... Well, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry if I came on a little strong there. No, I like that. In yeah. fact, uh, I was just wondering if we might have time for a little encore here. Come here, Dr. Oh. Hi, Dad. <clears throat> Brenda. Hi. Hello, Dan. You know, you might want to try the supply closet next time. You'll have more privacy, Dad. 
What does he know about this fly closet? <laughs> huh? I want to know. <laughs> Wait a minute. What has Bo got to recommend himself for saint of the year? I never said he was a saint, Max. I said that he had a lot to offer. Like what, money? What, are you calling me a gold digger now? Well, I can't think of any other reason you'd give him the time of the day. Bo happens to be a very kind, considerate, loving human being. He's also mature and responsible. I especially like that. You like adventure and you need excitement. No, no, Max. That's what you thrive on, not me, not anymore. I need someone that I can depend on. And Bo fits the bill. He's too predictable. Oh, yeah? He surprised me a couple of times. Max, to tell you the truth... You were lonely and he was available. What, you think I was looking for a man because I'm desperate to have one? Well, you sure didn't take any time to get swept off your feet, did you? Yeah, well, what did you expect me to do? Just sit around and bemoan the fact that you dumped me and flew off to Texas? I know you, Max. I'm sure that life on the ranch isn't all work and no play. Now that you mention it, yeah, I... There's a new woman. As a matter of fact, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, oh sorry. Did she break her collarbone? Well, I think she dislocated her shoulder, but they'll x-ray it at the hospital. I'm really sick to my stomach. I don't know if it's a chloroform or the pain in my shoulder. It's probably both. I'll call down and get a No, okay. no, I can walk. What? No, Sarah. Hey, oh. I'll cure your tongue, oh. right? It'll be a lot quicker. Wait, who's oh, Wade? They're looking at Wade, can you hear me? He's unconscious, ma'am. Is he going to be okay? He's lost a lot of blood. We've got to move him to stat. Let's get him on the board. Here, can you give us a hand? All right, get him out of here. I didn't mean to hurt anybody, Marilyn. I just wanted to love you and to have you. You don't know the meaning of the word love! It didn't have to be like this. We could have been very happy together. Get him out of my sight! I love you, Marilyn. I love Okay, now, take it real easy. One, two, three. How's it look? It doesn't look good, right? Okay, so give me uh, 30... Oh, wait a minute. Make it 35 minutes, because okay. I have to find somebody to cover for Meg. Okay. Okay, what about this time? Is that right? <laughs> Uh, what? It's festive. Thank Hi there. You. Hey. Man. Let's see you. Okay. <clears throat> so? So? So what? So are you going to explain yourself? Explain what? Well, you know, I figured there was some heat between you and Brenda, but uh, <laughs> fooling around in the stairwell, that is hey, not uh, the father I've always known and loved. Yeah, well, I don't know. Something about her makes me want to throw caution to the wind. Caution you know? to the wind? Yes. You feel pretty good? <laughs> yes, I would say so. Yeah, very good. Well, how long have you been feeling these symptoms, son? Oh, I don't know. For sure, I'd say maybe a couple of months, son. <laughs> well, if you want my blessings, you've got them. I like Brenda. Thank you. She seems like your type. Yeah, what's my type? Well, mm, honest, straightforward. You know, down to earth. Yeah. That kind of type. Whatever happened to the father of her baby? Well, I, I wrote you about the explosion at uh, Asa and Cord's wedding reception. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one guy was killed. Yeah. Well, that was the father of her baby. And she was hurt, too. It wasn't serious, thank God. How awful. Yeah, it sure was. What, do you think it's wise to keep on being her doctor? Dan, Dr. Spencer her, is her OBGYN. I'm not her doctor. I'm just uh, consulting. I felt it was smart and with this toxemia that she's got. Well, what stage is she? Initial, but I think we've got it under control. Well, Dad, you know, I'd really like to consult on that. You know, I've done a lot of toxemia stuff over at New York General. Dan, thank you. I really appreciate your concern, but I think uh, two doctors are enough, don't Larry, you? Yeah. we have an emergency. Two ambulances have been dispatched over to Landview University. Wade Coleman and Sarah Gordon were attacked, and Wade is a red blanket. Oh, okay, uh, call the EMS, see what you find out. Got it. Well, that's great. How long have you known her? A couple months. What's her name? Name? 
Bobby Joe, Peggy Sue, Billy Ray. Sildy. Name's Sildy. Oh, don't tell me. Let me guess. She's beautiful and she's uh, the daughter of some rich rancher, right? You met her while she was picking up some ribs at the local barbecue pit. No, no. I actually, uh, a friend introduced me. She's very outgoing, full of life. She's got an inner beauty that's uh, really extraordinary. I like that most about her. Well, let's make that second on my list. Yeah. Never runs out of energy, and she's just great on the ranch. She's helping you with the work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Al just loves her. She's with him a lot. And she puts him to bed at night and fixes him breakfast in the morning. Well, it sounds to me like she should just live with you. She Move did. right in. Yeah, she did. She even brought all of her gardening tools. Yep, house may not be done this spring, but there's gonna be a lot of flowers. Well, congratulations. I'm really happy for you. Nathan, Max. I, I, I'm sorry, first. No, go ahead, what were you gonna say? I wish you and Bo all the best. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I wish you and, and he'll do the same. Oh, no. Megan! Haven't you heard? Heard what? They've arrested the uh, Fraternity Row killer. Well, who is it? Uh, Neil somebody or other. Oh, my God. Listen, he abducted Sarah. Um, she's okay, but she's on her way to Lambview Hospital. I don't know any more details than that. I've got to go to the hospital right away. But Megan, I'll take you. No, I will drive my Megan! Car. I gotta go, Max! Do they have tanning machines in that underground city or what? Hey, Max. Hey, man, is it good to see you? How are hey, you doing? You're looking terrific. Well, uh, just down in the Caribbean, drop Vicky, Tina, kids off there for a little bit. Uh, they are resting after this. They turn to business. Yeah, I bet. Uh, everybody okay? Yeah, yeah, thank God everybody made it all right. How you doing? Been better. Yeah, I know. Heard about Al. I'm real sorry, Max. Yeah. Any luck finding Gabrielle? Well, all I know right now is that she's still in the area. What makes you think she's still here in Landview? I hired a private investigator. He's keeping tabs on all the bus and train stations, airports, car rentals. Uh, I stopped by because I wanted to see if I could talk Clint into uh, running this picture in the next edition with a headline, you know, uh, missing reward for information, that sort of thing. Well, I don't think you have to worry about that. Clint's real eager to find Gabrielle himself. Why is that? Well, he, he wants to talk to her. He wants to find out exactly how much he had to do with this conspiracy against Vicky. Well, Clint is dreaming if he thinks he's going to get anything like the truth out of you ever. Uh, yeah, that's what I told him, too. But he still wants to talk to her, if he yeah. can find her. Well, I've been plastering these all over town, mm. and Melinda's going to let me go on the air a little later and uh, make a personal appeal to Gabrielle. That's great. It sounds like you got all the bases covered, then. Oh, I hope so. So, how are things going on the ranch? <laughs> it's, it's coming along. It's pretty good. It's not showing a profit yet. And thanks to Gabrielle, I am now using all the money I had left to find my son. Wow. Anyone who comes up with any information, I'm going to have to take out a second mortgage on the ranch to pay him. Are you kidding me? No, Max, I'm sorry, man. No. Yeah, some days it just doesn't pay to get up. You know, you got a lot of good friends here in town. <laughs> I hope you know that, Max. I mean, we're going to do everything we can to help you out. Uh, yeah, I just ran into one of those good friends. Megan. She gave me the cold shoulder. Why? Well, you ought to know why. I don't know what magic you Buchanan's have, but if you could put it in a bottle and sell it, you make a fortune. <laughs> Max, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Bo and Megan. According to her, they're the hottest thing in Landview. I'll have one of the doctors call you Excuse immediately. Me. Excuse me. Yes. My name is Megan Gordon. My sister was just brought in. That door over there. Thank you. Bo. Hi. Hey, Sarah. Megan's here. Sarah, you okay? Okay. What happened? What did Neil do to you? He chloroformed her, and then he took her up to the clock tower. He was going to keep her as a shield so he could kidnap Mary Lynn. Well, why is she in so much pain? Because she fought him, and he dislocated her shoulder. Larry, is she going to be all right? 
Yeah, yeah. I was just letting her sleep off the effects of the chloroform. <clears throat> as far as the shoulder is concerned, there's no evidence of any fracture or any nerve damage, but we do have to manipulate it back in place. Excuse me just a moment. Sure. <clears throat> Sydney? Ah, please, could I use you for a minute? All right. Sarah, you may feel this a little, even with the anesthetic. Uh, just yell and scream all you want, okay? We've got to get that shoulder back in place. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. I'm right here. Will you stay with me? Yeah, sure. Any change in pulse and blood pressure, Brenda? No change. Okay, where's the spinal films? Judy went across the hall to pick them up. <sighs> All right, call radiology and see if the CAT scan's available yet. Yep. Spinal films, no fractures. The sixth and seventh Seven. cervical vertebrae look good. Terrific. Okay, let's check it out. All right, looks like good news. Does that mean you won't be paralyzed? No injury to the neck or spinal column. The cat's available in five minutes. All right, great. Wade, it's safe to take off your collar. You'll be more comfortable without it. Wade? Wade, do you want to wake up and talk to me? Why won't you wake up? What's wrong with him? We won't know for sure until we do the cat scan. Well, you have to help him. You can't just let him die. Yeah, then we're doing everything we can, all right? No, you're not. He's not responding. Please, please don't let him die. Take her to the waiting room, no. Brenda. No, I want to be here with Wade. Get her out of here now, Brenda! Yes, Doctor. Brenda, come on. It'll be a spare outside. I'll come and get you as soon as there's a change. Wait. Give me a response. Open your eyes, move your legs, anything. Come on. Wait. Right this way. Thank you so much for coming to uh, talk to me. Would you like some coffee? Mm -hmm. I um. I have to go to the bus station really soon. I just want to do whatever I can to uh help you with this documentary. I really appreciate it. Uh, I was kind of shocked to be at first why you want to do this on my father. Why? Well, he was wanted by the police and he died because he, um, well, he wasn't exactly a hero. You know. Christine, sit down. Your father was an adventurer. He was a man of vision. He took risks that an ordinary man would never dare to take, and he never gave up, no matter how many times he failed. That's true. No, I plan to present your father as a, a great visionary, a man who belongs in the archaeological textbooks for the future generation to look up to. Now, did he keep any diaries? Yeah. What about photographs of, of his various excavation sites? Well, there was a lot of photographs that he, ha that he had of various digs, but, um... Melinda, he... he never discovered anything. What are you talking about? He discovered Eterna. That is his legacy to the world. He didn't discover Eterna. Gabrielle and Tina discovered Eterna. But he discovered the gold first, now didn't he? I don't... I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I can't talk about this anymore. J Come here. Listen. He did discover that gold. If he did, don't you think that, that he deserves the credit for it? Look, when we both got... When we all got out of Eterna, we agreed that we were not going to discuss any of this with anybody. Well, that's not fair. Don't you see what they're doing? The others are trying to take away his greatest accomplishment. Christine, we can't let them do that. Now, he did discover that gold, and it's still buried there under that mountain, isn't it? Yes. Yes, he did. I mean, it is his discovery, but don't you understand? It's, it's, it's booby-trapped, and it's buried, and it doesn't mean anything! Melinda. You have to promise me that you will not breathe a word that I told you anything about the gold that's buried in Eterna. 
won't say a word. Linda, uh, excuse, uh, excuse me. me. There's an update on the uh, fraternity of Rose situation. Sarah Gordon's not the only one that was injured by the killer. Wade Coleman has been taken to Landview Hospital in serious condition. Uh, oh, my God. Wait. Um, Christine? Christine, what? Do you think we can have the story ready by the 6 o'clock news? Oh, sure. The film truck's uh, headed in right now. Do you want to look at it? You can do it. I'm working on something else. What? <laughs> I just got confirmation. There's gold in them Var Hills. There is a buried treasure of gold in Eterna. You all clear? All set. Yeah, nice digs. I approve. I really don't think all of this is necessary. Well, we want to keep you here overnight, make sure there are no lingering effects of that chloroform. Thanks, Larry. Okay. Now, if you have any problems with pain in that shoulder, you call me, all right? I'll see you all later. Okay. I can't believe it. That guy could have killed you. You almost threw me off the roof of the clock tower, Megan. If Bo hadn't have been there. Shh. You're fine, and Neil is in prison now. Hey. Hmm? You had a pretty bad fight with Neil. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do have a few aches and pains. It's minor stuff. I'm okay. Maybe you ought to have Larry look at it, just to, you know, just to make sure. I'm okay. I'm telling you. Listen, you, you concentrate on your recovery. Well, I'm going to feel a lot better once I have this stupid-looking contraption off my arm. <laughs> now, maybe I'll talk to CJ, and uh, we'll get some of his little dinosaur stickers and just <laughs> put on there. I feel better already. Have I said thank you? Mm -hmm. About 16 times. But nobody's counting. I don't know what I would have done without you. Just forget it, okay? It's over. So now you, you rest. Mm -hmm. Hey, what about Wade? How's Wade? I don't know. I don't know. I'll go check on him. Well, I'll come with you. I'd like to pick up some flowers for Sarah. You don't have to. No, I want to. Okay. We'll be back in a flash. Okay. I wanted to show you how much I appreciated you saving my sister. Well, Megan, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It's the, Bo, you Sarah don't have to... is very special to me. If you hadn't been there to save her, I don't. Okay, Megan. Um, let, wait, let's go check on Wade. So, how do you explain the coma? Severe concussion, but he should have come out of it sooner than this. Well, let me let me check his pupils again. Wade? Come on, kid, give me a response. I don't know, Brendan. Maybe we all missed something on the CAT scan. I'm going to ask the head of neurosurgery to consult on this. And I want you to let me know as soon as there is there if there's any kind of change in his condition. Yes, sir. Okay. Doctor? What? Well, She's right outside, Wade. We get her for me, Brenda. Yep. Get her. Wade, I'm Dr. Wolek. You were in a fight over at the university and you had a bad accident. Tell Marilyn Coleman to get in here right away, would you? Okay, thanks. Hello? Yep, she's fine and she's on her way in here, Wade. Wade, I'm gonna check your pupils one more time, okay? Okay, now I want you to follow this finger without moving your head, okay? Terrific, terrific, okay. Now, we're giving you some blood. You've got a nasty cut on your head, but x-rays show that it's nothing to worry about. So just relax, okay? okay. You mind going in and watching after wait until his wife gets here? Sure, I'll be happy. Ooh. Good prognosis. Yeah, well, we're going to monitor him for another 24 hours, but I have a feeling the kid's going to be all right. You were terrific in there. I mean that. I'm really impressed with the way you handled Wade. Thanks. A compliment from a super nurse. Yeah, well, well, just hold on a minute, because I have a criticism here. Oh, I knew it was too good to be true. Okay, okay. 
Was it the suturing? Was it uh, the way... No, no, it was your bedside manner. I thought you came down on Marilyn pretty hard in there. Well, she was in hysterics. Well, of course she's in hysterics. She thinks her husband is going to die. You don't have to order her out of the room like that. Brenda, she has no right being in there. My first priority is the patient's welfare. Well, the patient's family is very important to the patient's welfare. I mean, you have to take in consideration that they need to trust us. They need to feel that they yeah, can come well, to us. Brenda, you please understand? just spare me the lecture, okay? I've had enough bedside manner lectures in med. You are a real arrogant son of a gun, you know that? Well, thank you. I'll add that to my list of compliments for the day. And if I didn't know for sure that you were Larry's son, I... What, Brenda? What? What? Go ahead and say it. But you can't believe that swell Larry Wolak could have produced a cruel and insensitive offspring. Well, you know what? Maybe you should take a refresher course in basic genetics. And maybe you should take a refresher course in basic manners, Dan. Is, um, is he conscious? Can I see him? Yes. He's both of those things. Go on in. Wait. Oh, you know, maybe Megan and Bo got together when uh, we were all trapped down in Eterna. I got the distinct impression it's been going on a lot longer than that. But listen, Court, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. I mean, I know how tight your family is, so hey, please... No, believe me, Max, I'm as confused about this as you are. Are you sure you got the story straight? Well, uh, Megan didn't exactly say that Bo was returning her undying love, but, uh, I mean, she made it pretty clear that it was the same way both ways. Hmm. You know, uh, now that you mention it, there was this party a couple months ago where Bo said he was going to take Megan. Now, I asked him about mm -hmm. that, and I thought it was a little strange, and he said it was going to somehow help him get closer to Sarah. <laughs> I thought that was a little funny, but it looks like it helped him get a little closer to Megan, huh? Megan usually takes a relationship real slow. She usually doesn't jump into anything. Hmm. Hey, you know, maybe this has got something to do with Megan finding out that Vicky's her mama. You know, I know for a fact that Megan was real upset by that. Now, maybe she just turned to Bo for some kind of support. Well, I couldn't get her to talk too much about it, but it's pretty clear that it's tearing her up. Well, I know Vicky's really ripped up about it. She's hoping that one day they can become friends, but it seems like Megan isn't even interested in that. Sorry for both of them. But especially Megan. I think if she could just open up, give Vicky a chance, I think it might make a big difference in her life. You still really care for the lady, don't you? If I cared that much for her, I wouldn't have left her behind the way I did. Well, I don't have to tell you how things went with me and Tina. <laughs> I mean, we finally got together because we realized that we really loved each other. You don't have to make a mistake. I mean, it's all right to make one. But the big mistake is not going back and trying to fix it. I admit I care about her, but... I think the days of Megan and me are long gone. It's history. Listen, thanks for the coffee. I'll uh, get back to you, and just in case anybody calls in about Gabrielle. Sure. Uh, we'll be sure to get in touch. Uh, are you staying over at the Waterside? No. I can't afford a hotel room. Not that in a private investigator, and the P.I.'s more important right now. Robert Melinda may put me up for the night. I'll find out. I'll let you know. Hey, hey, forget that. Listen, we've got plenty of room over at Landfair, all right? Now, Vicki and Tina and the kids, they're all still in the Caribbean. Clint and I are going to be there all by ourselves. I'll tell you what, in the sweetened deal, throw in a couple of my extra special... <laughs> Three alarm chili dogs. I'll accept anyway. Thanks. Oh, so you've had my chili dog. Huh? Yeah, the fire extinguisher. <laughs> good idea. Well, thanks for the good news, Danny. I'm glad to see you back in town, too. Glad to see you, too. Let's go give Sarah the good news. You know what? I'm going to put up a banner downtown that says, Sarah and Wade have made the grade. Bo, you are the one that deserves a banner. <laughs> what, me? No. No, I, I got lucky, that's all. No, you happen to be a genuine first class hero. Uh, it's true. Thanks to you, Wade and Sarah are alive, and, and Neil is never going to bother anyone else again. You are one in a million. Well, let's, let's just drop that hero stuff, though, okay? No, I meant that from the heart. Every word of it. Well, thanks. Yeah. I, let's uh, go to... Sarah's probably worried about us. And, right. Yeah, and you know, we never even got her any flowers. I, I can do that. You go ahead. Okay. Are you in any pain? <laughs> I just feel like I have a major.
your hangover. Oh, every time I think about what could have happened to you. It's okay, Mary. It's okay. No. You know, this is all my fault. While I was sitting out there waiting and worrying about you, I thought about when you were away with Christine. And I realized that I acted just like my dad when he left my mom. I was too hurt and I was too stubborn to realize how much we really loved each other. And that led to all of our, all of our misunderstandings. I'm so sorry. Hey, Lynn, I was stubborn too. And thoughtless and insensitive. And I should have told you or called well, you. Well, I don't. Life. I don't want to rehash all the mistakes that we made. I just want to forget about them. And I want to remember the vows that we took when we got married. We exchanged those vows because you wouldn't give up on our love. And I don't want to give up, Wade. Can we please start over? Can we please forgive me? Can we start over? Wait. What happened to Wade? Wade is doing great. He's conscious. The doctor thinks that he's going to be uh, just fine. Oh, thank God. Did you see him? Is he awake? Well, he's getting there, but uh, Mary Lynn was there, so I just I didn't want to interrupt, and I knew you wanted an update. Where's Megan? She's buying flowers. I think she's the one who needs the flowers. I don't know. I think Megan's holding up pretty well. Mm -mm. It's just the actress that you're seeing. The real Megan is confused, wondering who she is, wondering if anybody really loves her. She's just hiding behind this I don't give a damn facade. I don't know how to reach her. Well, you don't worry about that. You worry about getting well. We'll, we'll take care of Megan. We'll get through to her. Who's going to take care of you, huh? Well, me? Didn't I prove this afternoon? I can, I can take care of myself. You proved that you have no qualms about diving headfirst into dangerous situations. Oh, God, I think about Neil standing over you with that axe in his hand. Oh, Sarah, it's okay. It's not okay. It's not. I, I'm doing just what Megan does by not facing the truth. Just for one split second, I thought I was gonna lose you. Well, that split second's over. And here I am. And everything's gonna be just fine. I promise. I saw Blakemore. He said he'd be glad to see Wade. Morning. Right, so I just want to say good job. You did just great, son. Well, I could have done better. Right, nurse? What's going on here? What happened? Well, Brenda gave me a lesson in bedside manners. And listen, if I was out no, of line... Hey, hey, don't back away from it. I like a nurse with fire and passion, especially when they're right. I appreciate your honesty, Brenda. I'll apologize to Mary Lynn. And I'll use your advice in dealing with patients' families in the future. Friends? Yeah, friends. So there's hope for this guy after all, huh? Yeah, I think so. You're pretty exhausted? Yeah, I'm kind of worn out. And I was just wondering if you wouldn't be too upset if I didn't go to that play tonight. I don't even think I could get home and get out of my clothes. Don't worry about it. I, I, as a matter of fact, here, Dan, mm. you take these. You've earned them. Right. Listen, I'm well, sorry. It's about all right. That. Don't worry about it. I just thought of something. Have you got that cassette still? Yeah. All right. I tell you what. All is not lost. We'll get in the car. You put the cassette in. I'll drive you around. It's almost <laughs> like being there. Okay. That sounds great. I'll see you soon. Way to go, Dad. Way to go. So your friend Neil did this? Well, I thought he was my friend. I almost realized too late how sick he really is. I really. I'm sorry. I appreciate your stopping by. I'm, I'm glad you're concerned. So you don't have to have surgery or anything, do you? No. I guess my head was too hard. 
Well, the uh, nurse says that you're a real hero, you know? I feel like a real fool in this hospital gown. <laughs> well, as soon as your room's ready, I'll go home and get you something else to put on. That's good. Would you mind getting me a club sandwich and maybe some fries, too? Sure. The doctor says it, it's okay. I'll get you a triple decker, okay? Well, it looks like things worked out really um, well for you, too. Yeah, looks like it. I'm glad. Well, uh, I gotta get going. I've got a bus to catch. I gotta get my stuff together. What? Well, I told you I'm leaving town. Yeah, I know, but I didn't think it would be this soon. Well, there's um, no point in sticking around. Where are you headed? I'm gonna um go back to Wilmington. I like it there, and uh, I've got some money from my father's uh, insurance, and I think I'm gonna open a photography studio. What about uh, the newspaper work? Oh, I think I want to take some pictures of some happy faces for a while. I hope you're very happy. Thanks. Marilyn, look, I want to apologize to you. I never, for everything that I've done to screw up you and Wade, and I never meant to hurt anybody. Christine, it's okay. Be happy. Christine. Philly, see so you 76 or something? Oh, yeah. I think I better take a rain check, though. Oh, you got it. You are feeling better, though, huh? Safer. Good. Oh, you know, I thought your parents still don't know that you're in here. You want me to call them? No, no. Um, just give me some time to pull myself together, right? I don't want to get all emotional in front of them. What's wrong with emotion? Makes your eyes all red and puffy. <laughs> your eyes. Beautiful. They're red and puffy, but they're, they're just beautiful. Thanks. You're making me feel better. Less guilty. Why? What do you have to feel guilty about? I just should have realized that Neil was a dangerous, desperate person. You know, I, I thought I had instincts about people in my work. I, I can always tell if someone's going to accept their blindness and start to build a life or, or if they're just going to fight it. So you're a, a bit of a psychologist, too. Sort of. I didn't feel good about Neil for a while. But I didn't say anything because I didn't think it was fair. And maybe if I had, none of this would have happened. Well, you're not the only one. I had a gut feeling about that kid, and I told everybody I didn't like him, I didn't want him around, so I'm more guilty than anybody else about this. We tried to keep tabs on him, and him and, and Jack and Casey and, and a bunch of other people. There were just too many suspects to go around. So... Who, who made you house mother of fraternity row, anyway? It's just in my nature, I guess. I just... Worry about everybody. Mm. Well, now I want you to worry about you and getting better. See, I happen to have some instincts about people, too, and I've got a feeling that you're a tough patient. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I'm going to be doing cartwheels in here as soon as you walk out that door. I would like to see that. So maybe when you get better, you can uh, turn a cartwheel or two for me sometime. Maybe. Depends on how well I'm treated while I'm laid up. Well, I'm gonna make it my personal mission to make sure that nobody ever harms you again as long as I'm around. Where's Megan? Did she go out and pick those flowers <laughs> or did she I don't buy them? I don't know. Maybe uh, she stopped to get something to eat, to eat. Are you gonna be okay here for just a little while? 